Prepare to meet a saint who isn't. What's this fellow's name? It's Apollinarius. If you look very carefully at this little mosaic, it says Sanctus Apollinaris. He's even got a plate behind his head, as apparently all saints do. Here's the problem with this description. He wasn't a saint. Why? Because he was outside of orthodoxy and deemed a heretic for misunderstanding the nature of Jesus Christ. While he most certainly believed that Jesus was fully divine, he believed that Jesus was only two-thirds human, and without Jesus being fully human, we don't have a representative, which means we have no forgiveness and no righteousness. Theology was deemed as important by the early church as God considers theology to be important. If we don't have orthodox doctrines, now there are some we can debate about and somebody's going to be wrong and not go to hell, but we have to have the orthodox doctrine straight or we are outside of orthodoxy. Are there any Lessons that we can learn from Apollinarius, a heretic from 17 centuries ago? Yeah, about six. Here we go. We must take great care not to react against one heresy by falling into the opposite ditch. Apollinarius was so concerned about the deity of Christ, he forgot the equally vital doctrine of the humanity of Christ. This can happen so often. You see a false teaching or a false teacher, for instance, you see Mr. Health Guy, I can heal you and send in your seed and I'll send you an oily cloth with prayer anointing and you'll be healed. You and I hear that and we go, oh, that's just terrible teaching. And we might fall into the ditch of thinking that God never heals. That's wrong. God still heals miraculously through medicine or divine intervention. We do not want to fall into the opposite ditch that we are fighting against. Like Apollinarius did. Uh, lesson number two. We can be so concerned about theological controversies that we forget the atonement. Apollinarius became so obsessed with the nature of the incarnation, he forgot the reason for the incarnation. Make sure you incorporate the cross into all of your theological musings or you will ultimately not have a whole understanding of that doctrine. Now lesson number three. Just as it was the Arian controversy that led Apollinarius to take his eyes off the cross, modern controversies can have the same effect. But the temptation needs to be resisted. We must have a theology that is a whole Bible theology and a vision that is focused on the cross of Jesus Christ. There's a little debate about the issue of evil. How can a good God allow evil? And there are a lot of Christian philosophers who will try to explain it. Well, God thinks like this, he acted like that, and it tends to water down the deity of God. What are they forgetting? You and I cannot understand the reason for evil unless we remember the cross. We need to make sure all of our theology, theology ultimately is cross-centered. A lesson and number four, little learning is a dangerous thing. Apollinarius was a fairly cultured man, but went to his head. Basil and Gregory, university graduates themselves, they saw beyond the allure of a classical culture in a way that Apollinarius couldn't. We too need to be able to look beyond the glitter of a writer's PhD or chair of this or that or the other. And remember, all the treasures of wisdom are in Christ. Let us be learned, but primarily let us be knowledgeable about Jesus. Lesson number five, Apollinarius stands as a great warning against the speculation that happens so often in theology. The theologian has no business going beyond what is written in the scriptures. God reveals what he chooses to reveal. Some things he doesn't, and you don't want to go playing on that playground. And our final lesson from the old heretic, the Apollinarian controversy also challenges us to have a full-orbed 
biblical view of the Incarnation, which will protect us against many errors. In the fifth century, the Council of Chalcedon concluded Jesus was 100% God, 100% man, and those two natures never mixed or mingled, nor can we detract from either the divine nature or the human nature. If we do, we will have fallen into the ditch Apollinarius fell into, and that is a ditch you do not want to tumble into. How lost and hurting is our world? Take a look at this young man who paid a cosmetic surgeon $50,000 to transition into becoming a Martian. This young man apparently watched a sci-fi movie from the 1940s and concluded, that's what a Martian must look like. That's what I feel I am. He gathered up the funds and he persuaded a human being to take a scalpel to his face and transition him into looking like what we think a Martian might possibly look like. Not to mention the society that embraces it. Our world is lost and our world is hurting and there is one solution, the gospel. Will you join us in rescuing the perishing?